Do you ever just sit down with something really complicated and just think like, I'm going to make sense of this thing, like grabbing a book on the theory of relativity or something else and just trying to make it make sense just because no, no, just me. Okay. Well, never mind. Forget that. Anyway, the point is navigating the tax landscape can sometimes feel just as complicated as understanding Einstein's theories. But don't you worry, my team at NerdWallet and I have you covered. Today, I'll be answering four common tax questions. Hey y'all, welcome back to NerdWallet. I'm Nikita. And just a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor and this is not personalized financial advice. So let's just jump into the first question and it's probably one of the most popular. How do I file my taxes? For starters, taxes are typically due around April 15th. The exact date might fluctuate if the 15th is on the weekend or on a holiday. So be sure to check the IRS website for the exact date. To file, you have a few options. You can file them yourself online using tax prep software, like a TurboTax or a Tax Slayer. These sites will guide you through the process, checking which deductions you qualify for and filing both your state and federal taxes electronically. You can also get your taxes prepared in person at a brick and mortar office through companies like H&R Block or Jackson Hewitt. This can be a great option if your taxes are slightly more tricky or if you just want that in-person support. If you have a very complex return or have other more nuanced considerations, like running a small business, you could also consider seeking out a tax pro or tax advisor yourself. Just remember to vet anyone that you'll be trusting with access to your account numbers and other sensitive information, and make sure to check their credentials. CPAs, tax attorneys, and enrolled agents are just a few flavors of tax pros and all have different levels of expertise. But if you have a pretty simple tax return, you might not need anything more than a free filing service. Speaking of free filing services, there are several options for filing your taxes for free, which makes me just infinitely happy because free happens to be my favorite price. IRS Free File provides access to free guided tax prep software from several tax prep companies. You'll typically need to fall under a certain income level to qualify for this free service. If you're a confident filer with a relatively straightforward return and you don't need a lot of guidance, the IRS also offers access to free fillable federal tax forms that you can submit electronically regardless of your income level. Also, many of the major tax software providers offer a free tax prep service for people that have simple tax returns. You might also check your local community for free resources for tax help if you're a low to moderate income earner, disabled, or elderly. VITA, a federal grant program, helps organizations provide free tax prep from local IRS certified volunteers within their communities. Once you've decided how you would like to file, you'll need to gather up all your tax information. This would be your W-2s or 1099s, last year's returns, retirement account contributions, charitable donations, any taxes you paid, and any other proof of income or expenses that may have been tax deductible. If you owe money to the IRS after filing, you have plenty of options to settle the bill. You can send an electronic payment, wire transfer, pay with checks or a card, even cash payments are an option. If you're getting a refund, yay. Filing electronically and requesting direct deposit can help you get your refund as quickly as possible. With this option, your return could be processed in about three weeks. You can track the status of your federal refund on the IRS website. Okay, a second popular tax question is how can I save money on my taxes? A common thread that links us all is that absolutely none of us wants to pay more in taxes than we have to. Everyone wants to save, and there are actually several ways you can end up with a lower tax bill. Tax deductions and tax credits are both great ways to save a bit. Tax deductions will lower your taxable income, and a tax credit will provide a reduction on your tax bill. There are many credits and deductions that you can explore from education credits to homeowner deductions. Your CPA or tax filing software can review some of these options. Another way to save is to increase retirement account contributions to reduce taxable income. Traditional IRA and 401k contributions are typically made with pre-tax dollars, so adding to one can result in tax savings by reducing taxable income. Contributing to a health savings account or HSA can also provide some tax advantages in a few ways. Payroll HSA deductions are pre-tax dollars. The growth on the accounts are tax-free and qualified medical expenses are also not taxed. This can be a great option to keep in mind if you're on a high deductible health plan through your employer. And remember, file your taxes on time. If you don't file your federal taxes or file for an extension and pay your estimated tax by the tax filing deadline, you could face some pretty substantial fines. And since we're talking about saving money on taxes, let's answer the third question. Tax credits or deductions, itemizing or standard deduction? 
which should I choose? I'm gonna give you the very short answer here first. Go with ever which one will save you the most money. <laughs> like I mentioned before, you can check into both options on your own using the tax prep software, or you can have your CPA check for you. When deciding to take the standard deductions or itemize, keep that thought in mind. When you claim the standard deduction, you're able to reduce your taxable income by a set amount of money. And when you claim itemized deductions, you lower your income from a list of expenses that the IRS has pre-approved. If your deductible expenses were more than the value of the standard deduction, itemizing could be a useful way to maximize your tax benefits. As far as tax credits or deductions, all things equal, credits are generally considered preferable to tax deductions. Credits directly reduce the amount of tax you owe dollar for dollar, and deductions lower the amount of income that could be taxed on. So let's say, for example, there was the option to take a $1,000 tax credit or a $1,000 tax deduction. If you earn $50,000, your tax bill would not decrease by $1,000 with a tax deduction. Instead, your taxable income would now be $49,000. So that $1,000 deduction would lower your taxable income by the percentage of your highest income bracket, whereas the tax credit would directly shave off $1,000 from any taxes you might owe. Ultimately, if you're eligible for both a credit and a deduction for the same expense, do some number crunching to see which will give you the best financial outcome. All right, last up, question number four. What happens if I don't file my taxes? To answer this question, let's first clarify if you're legally required to file taxes, because not everyone is. In general, if your income is below a certain level, you might not have to file a tax return with the IRS. There are several stipulations, like self-employment earnings, and general income limits can fluctuate a bit from year to year. The IRS website can help clarify if your specific financial situation requires you to file a return. But just because you don't have to file a return doesn't mean that you shouldn't file a return. You might qualify for a tax break that could generate a refund, so it may be worth looking into filing to see what you could qualify for. And if you're in the vast part of the population of folks who are required to file taxes, there can be quite a few issues if you fail to do so. For starters, failing to file your taxes on time will result in the IRS levying a failure to file penalty. This penalty is 5% of the unpaid taxes for each month or part of a month that a tax return is late, up to 25% of your unpaid taxes. And keep in mind that whether you file or not, if you owe the government money, they'll expect to be paid on time. You'll be charged penalties after the tax filing deadline if you haven't paid. If you don't owe taxes to the government or if you're owed a tax refund, there's no penalty that occurs for not filing your taxes, but you won't receive your tax refund until you do file. I just wanna add that if you haven't filed taxes in a few years, I know that that can be scary and overwhelming just to think about how to catch up, but know that there are things you can do to relieve the stress. The IRS website can send you transcripts that detail how much it is believed that you owe. Ask your employers for past documents so that you can go ahead and file the taxes. It's possible that you learn upon filing that you're actually owed a refund. And just a last point here, if you can't afford to pay your taxes, it's still best to file your returns. You can work out a payment plan or installment agreement with the IRS to help make your payments more manageable. Yes, there will still be some interest added to the amount, but you'll be on the way to getting straight with the IRS and may be able to reduce future penalties. There we have it answers to four common tax questions. But just like Einstein didn't figure out the universe in 10 minutes, we're probably not gonna figure out the complexity of tax navigation that quickly either. If you have more questions, wanna clarify some of the points I touched on, or you just feel inspired to spiral down a rabbit hole of the IRS and tax world, pop over to our tax dashboard at nerdwallet.com. There's a ton of free resources there for you to do more research on deductions, tax brackets, or find answers to other questions. Now my question to you, how are we celebrating once tax season is over? Expecting a big refund this year? Yay, have fun. But make sure to take care of your future self too by paying down some debts, saving for a big life purchase down the road, or putting some into an investment account. Not as immediately fun as shopping sprees, but your future self will thank you.